I feel it's one of the most, if not the most important computers ever built. To me, it was, it, it was the heart of the mission. We wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have went to the moon without the Apollo guidance computer. This may be the only time an Apollo guidance computer is powered up because this has not been an easy task. It's not just like we plug it in and, and go. It's, it's going to be a real uh, monumental, it's a monumental task, I would say. Okay, three, two, one, zero. We are uh, impatiently awaiting the arrival of uh, the Apollo guidance computer, which was the computer that guided basically man to the moon, and we have a rare opportunity to be able to restore it. This is Mark Verdiel. He's chief technology officer of a computer company called Samtech and lives in Silicon Valley. But his real passion is restoring old vintage computers. He has a popular YouTube channel where he makes videos like this. Woohoo! He's doing something weird. That's what led him to his most challenging restoration project yeah. yet. And the unlikely man behind it, Jimmy Wayne Locke. Locke was hunting for electronic parts in an industrial area outside of Houston in 1976 when he happened upon a warehouse that was looking to sell some bulk electronics for scrap metal. As soon as I walked into the place, I started looking around and I started seeing things that I recognized as being from the space program. Locke had actually worked briefly at NASA in Houston as a low-level technician, and so he was familiar with some of the equipment. Basically, he bought two tons of Apollo scrap, not having a really good idea of what was in it. And eventually, he found out that in the pile of scrap he had, there was this Apollo guidance computer, which is the, the gem of his collection. For decades, he let the Apollo guidance computer, discarded by NASA, gather dust in storage until one day he decided to dig the machine out and to figure out what it was for. He was stunned by what he discovered. The electronic box he assumed was junk had actually been used to test the Apollo lunar landers for the missions that first landed men on the moon. This guidance and navigation system will be mounted in an Apollo spacecraft to aid our three astronauts on their voyage to the moon and return. Locke soon found out that the Apollo Guidance Computer, or AGC, was at the time the most advanced compact computer ever built. It was the first computer to use integrated circuits, the backbone of modern electronics. It was the world's first general purpose portable computer, the first to fly, and the first on which human lives directly depended. Only a few were built, and computer geeks have come to prize these innovative moon machines. But still, he didn't know what to do with his AGC until he went to a space convention and met Mike Stewart, a spaceflight software engineer fascinated with the vintage machine, who then connected him with Verdil and his small crew of vintage computer restorers. And soon the plan was hatched. This unlikely group would attempt to restore and power up an Apollo guidance computer for the first time since the moon landing 50 years ago. Ooh. Sorry guys, I have camera in hand. The team first flew out to Houston, checked into a hotel, and turned their room into a makeshift laboratory where they spent a week assessing the computer, documenting the process on Verdil's YouTube channel. No should we bow? This is, this is the holy computer. But they needed more time and more equipment. So they asked Locke to fly to Silicon Valley with his AGC. Several months later, Locke arrived at Verdil's home laboratory with the computer in tow. It's still freaking heavy. And the crew went straight to work. The moment Which it's way still is there. It? The task ahead was daunting. They had to work 12 hours a day for almost 14 straight days. But I, I have news from you, the pins are corroded and damaged. I'm trying to figure out the, the extent of the damage. Okay. Not good. They dissected the machine, ran every diagnostic test they could, cleaned memory cores, repaired broken wires, racing to power on the computer and attempt a test flight. We all would like to kind of have it repaired and then build a rocket and go to the moon, but we can't quite do that. So the next step is to 
fly part of the mission and uh, do you know, repeat what the astronauts uh, were doing with the computer. After nearly two weeks of non-stop work, they'd reached the moment of truth. The crew gathered in Verdil's basement with some friends to try and power on the AGC and attempt a test flight mission. Three, two, one, zero. 2.27? Oh, it's running. Yeah, we got oh, it. Lincoln on, on, its, on its own memory? Yeah, on its own memory. That's great. Okay. So that is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we have almost landed. For us, it's the equivalent of the moon landing. This is the first time in 45 years anybody has turned this uh, computer on, any, any computer of this model, any Apollo guidance computer on, and uh, operated it and the burn has started. So it's now trying to fire the engine. Uh, the second register here is now displaying our um, altitude rate. This is pretty much identical to what they would have seen in, on the real mission. For his part, Locke hopes this project will help a younger generation learn how this computer helped astronauts fly to the moon, and in the process, help pave the way for the advanced computers we all depend on today. We need to preserve the legacy of this computer. In other words, future generations need to understand, you know, where all this came from 200 years from now. I want them to be able to see the Apollo guidance computer.